Hello and welcome to episode number 38 of the Mindful Making video podcast. This YouTube channel, Mindful Making, is all about making with our hands and the joy that that brings and how it can calm and ground us while making and then enjoy the final products that we can wear with pride. So if you are into yarn and knitting, making in general, this is the right place. If it's the first time here, welcome. I hope you will enjoy what I have to say uh, and what we will discuss this time. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's so great to see you again. But before we start, I would just like to acknowledge country. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that we are meeting on today. I am on Darek Kurungai land and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Lately the land has um, received a lot of water, way too much water and my heart goes out to those people in Queensland and in northern New South Wales who are struggling in the aftermaths of a, of a tremendous horrendous flood event uh, that have seen houses destroyed and even taken lives. My heart goes out to all of you who are impacted and have and and saying that I think we should all just remember the people who came before us how well they treated the country and the land that we can cherish today. So with that in mind, welcome. I am Jane and you have landed here in Hornsby Heights, which is north of Sydney. You are in my craft room and my home office, which is this beautiful mix of uh, corporate life and creative endeavors and my yarn, my own yarn shop here on the shelves next to me. I just had 45 minutes or so and I thought I'll just sit down to get a recording done to send to you. I think since we last spoke, which was mid-February, to be honest, I think the world has gone from bad to worse. So again, my heart goes out to the poor people of Ukraine. Feel your pain. It's horrendous. And I can only imagine the trauma that you are going through. Bombing a um, maternity hospital with pregnant women and young born babies is just a war crime. It's absolutely disgusting and um, we feel your pain. If you are so inclined, uh, please go and donate to Red Cross. Ukraine or around the world so that we can help out both in Europe and here in Australia for the flood victims. Yes, and then, you know, with worlds going from bad to worse, it has impacted my mood as well. And um, I think just being empathetic with the people in need also dampens my mood. So for instance, I haven't posted an Instagram post since 1st of March, and today it is the 12th of, no, it's actually the 13th of March. So two weeks, uh, which is a long break for me, but I just didn't feel like it was the time or I was in the mood to share anything cheery, happy, um, knitting, you know, it just became so almost obsolete or downgraded in the bigger scheme of things. Um, but then on the other hand, we might need these small pockets of joy, everyday wonders, uh, creativity, 
to basically cope with um, the world around us. So here we are, 13th of March, Sunday. It is uh, cloudy outside. Finally, the rain has stopped. Uh, we've had the last few days with no rain. Yesterday, I think all of the neighbors and all um, lawn owners across New South Wales were out mowing the lawn because it's just grown like that um, with all the water. Um, I was too, which was my exercise yesterday. It was, uh, it was a good exercise. So let's stop all the chitty chat and move into what we are here for, which is knitting. And let me start with what I'm wearing. So this is a top called Baby Blue. It is designed by Susie Haumann, a Danish designer. Um, and it is from a book called Blue Notes, which was published in 2014. So it's an old lady. Uh, but very timeless designs. Um, so I think I needed, I, well, I needed this last year and um, the pattern is available on Ravelry, but only in Danish. So I have knitted this top in Trinlinen from Sandnesgarn. Can you see that? Trinlinen. And it is a beautiful uh, summer yarn. It's a blend of 53% cotton, 33% viscose and 14% linen. And this color is called 6364. I just looked up it up on their website uh, and that color number is not available anymore. But in the notes, the show notes for this episode, for which you can find a link to in the description box below. I have um, inserted an alternative number, color that on screen at least looks similar to this beautiful blue. This runs 220 meter per 50 gram. So it is a light fingering weight, 440 meters per 100. Um, I knitted this on a, now I have to find my book because I can't remember. I knitted these, this on a 3mm needle and I used up three and a half skeins of these. And I made size number medium, I think. Let me insert a short little, little video of me wearing it and um, it's very beautiful and it's a beautiful fabric to wear in summer. With that out of the way, let's move into what I've been working on lately. You might notice something right here back of my right shoulder. So this is um, one of my latest finished objects. This will be called gum nut tea. So gum nuts are small fruits from the gum trees here in Australia. They are small sort of um, little, I'm about to say pellets uh, or nuts, hurt very much to, to step on barefooted. But I thought that these small bubbles of brown represent the knots. So this is a slip stitch pattern over a round yoke 
and um, I have used the, uh, the, the darker contrast color is a super soft. Uh, the color is called cinnamon. And then these here, the lighter yellowy brown is um, alpaca, 100% alpaca, the Titi Kaka uh, in color crown. The main yarn is beautifully hand dyed with botanical uh, dyes from Carola, by Carola Down Under. It is a 80% BFL and a 20% bamboo blend. Beautifully soft, drapey. It is a bit warmer than I thought it would knit up to be. So the wool content at least, you know, makes it more woolen than bamboo-ish, if you can even say that. But it has a, a beautiful weight to it and drape. As you can see, still with ends hanging out and it hasn't been blocked yet. As I said, it will be a future design of mine. I can't promise when. I just have to admit my energy and time just up and down and lately much more down than up. Um, but it is intended to be written up and shared with you all. It's an excellent um, opportunity for using up scrap yarns for the patterning up here. It could be two colored, it could be multicolored, it could whatever you fancy. I have repeated the little slip stitch here on the sleeves and here at the hem. Fairly uh, broad um, and not too long. Let's see if it grows with washing. Maybe it will, or maybe not. We will see. I will tell you more about this uh, gum knot tea in a later episode when I have more details about pattern and when it's blocked and I will also wear it then, hopefully in the next episode. Gum knot tea, the first finished object today. Now it can hang here and look beautiful as we continue speaking about the next finished object. And uh, it is the Curious Socks that I have worked on over the last few episodes, but finally they're done. Well, almost, because you can see a few ends still to weave in. But here they are, two socks, beautiful design by Andrea Mari. They are worked in um, Highland Sock by Holzgarn. Oh, charcoal, charcoal, and then the brown is shrew and the blue marine. So these are leftovers from other socks that I've made apart from the um, the charcoal, which are new skeins. They are men's size 41-ish, 41, 42, and they will go into a gift box. So I am just building up, you know, hand knitted gifts for a birthdays during the year and um, for Christmas. Maybe it will wait until Christmas, so there is a, a bigger bunch because these are the first, first pair of socks or the first gifts that can go into the gift box. Curio socks, um, Andrea Murray, I used 
Let's see how much yarn I used. 75 grams of yarn, which is 315 meters. If we, with this, look at um, then the, the uh, tally for February, the month of February, I have changed a bit in that tally. So let me just show you a, a spread. So out here, the different categories and then months at the top and the total calculation of meters down here at the bottom of the page. My intention was, upon some requests, I was about to say many requests, but there were a few, whether I could share um, my annual sort of tally. So when I figure out how to put a downloadable file, well, it's easy, but I just need to understand how I make that available on the website and it can be available there for a as a free down download if you want to um to have a similar system when that will happen again i don't know my head is full of ideas it's just a matter of getting them all done so in february it was just finished objects a pair of socks and 300 meters knitted up in february March tends to look more promising with a one finished object already and one on the needles. So let moves let us move on to what is on my needles. A few episodes ago I talked about dream knitting, about summer tops, um, and I created a bundle that you can see on Ravelry. And my um, name on Ravelry is Mindful Making AU. I'm Mindful Making on Instagram and my website on which you can find the show notes for this episode is called mindfulmaking.com.au. Um, so back then, I wanted uh, some summer tops and one of them that I had as dream knitting was the Scrabby Strieber which is designed by Pia. Pia from 50 Fabulous, a Danish designer as well. And uh, she also runs a podcast called 50 Fabulous. It's available in Danish and in English episodes. This is my version. It is knitted up in leftover yarn sock yarn primarily combined with coast a light fingering weight so all sort of fingering weight light fingering weight yarns in the color scheme of gray and um, mustardy brown bluish colors and a bit of sort of a soft nude color here as well Uh, the body is almost finished. This is actually, I'm on the last stripe and then moving into the sleeves. I am uh, working size three, which is supposed to have a 43 and a half inch bust measurement, but um, I couldn't um, get the gauge of 20 stitches per 10 centimeters. So this will be tighter. Um, and I think I have seen um, other knitters having problems in, in getting that open gauge. It is worked on a four millimeter needle, which is a US six. It gives a lovely fabric. Uh, maybe I could have gone up half a millimeter but then these stripes with the uh, coast would be very open 
and very loose. I have tried it on, it looks good. And this afternoon when I'm going to uh, watch my son play soccer, I will finish the body and possibly get a sleeve done. So I will make them this short sleeved, sort of mid upper arm length. I started this on the 15th of, no, I started this on the 5th of March. So eight days in, this is where I'm at. Beautiful project, uh, just a, a slip stitch um, row when changing colors between each stripe and then on and on and on it goes, knitting, 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 beautiful. And this has been my go-to, you know, the gumnut tea and the scrappy strieber because, and the simple knitting just has suited me so well in this challenging time. So I just wanted to knit, knit, knit and not have too much um, else going on up here and just make it a place for me to relax and just let my hands work. While I have been knitting, I have also been reading. So let me share what I've read this month. It's also the um, book club book of February. In the last episode, I started a new segment if you can call it that, uh, to talk about what I read. And uh, this time I have read Devotion by Hannah Kent. Hannah Kent is a young Australian author. She is a historian, so her books, uh, Devotion is number three of her, her books. And um, they have all been set in a historic setting and her way of writing just um, it's very detailed it's very um, immersive into well nature and everyday life so you feel that you are there with the characters in devotion we follow uh, Hannah who is a uh, Hannah and Tia or Thea who are two young girls living in Prussia and um, the story is set in the late 1830s where a, a Lutheran, an old Lutheran community flee or move or you know move to settle in South Australia. So it uh, describes them moving from Europe and on the long trip on the ship to South Australia and then the early challenges of settlement um, but more importantly it talks about a love story between those two girls. It's a beautiful book, beautiful book, very well researched as all Hannah Kent's books are, beautiful sentences, very flowery, uh, sensory words used and sometimes that also becomes the weakness of this book. Sometimes it just tips over into being too much and a bit brr. But I highly recommend uh, Hannah Kent's Devotion. It's a beautiful read and very life reaffirming or life affirming and love affirming. It is set in two main parts, which are called before and after. And uh, I will let you read the book to denote what that means. Highly recommend. As the book last month I talked about, which was Bewilderment by Richard Powers, this book doesn't 
completely get to the level of her Hannah Kent's first book, which was Burial Rites. That is absolutely amazing. That books that is set in Iceland in also the 1828, I think. If you want to read, read one book, read that one. And then after Devotion, or the other way around. Hannah Kent, Devotion, the book of this month. In the last episode, I talked about using my phone and the intention of using less time scrolling. And I think I've managed pretty well in reducing the time spent on the phone. For sure, I have limited the time of just a relentless scrolling one page after the next. When on my phone, I have looked for what I wanted to check out and then I've closed it again. And if I wanted to look Instagram, for instance, I've set aside, let's say 20 minutes and that is what I do the same way as watching a TV show. Also, I have used the phone for reading. The next book that I'm reading is on here from the library as an ebook. And so in that sense, uh, that will um, up my hours on the phone. The same if I watch YouTube videos or listen to podcasts, it's usually um, on here. So time spent is not the only parameter, but, also, but more importantly, it's the quality of the time spent or the internet intentionality of the time spent. And I think I have improved tremendously. I don't know whether you were inspired by the last episode and looked at uh, to look at your own habits and the use of phone and spending your time well. There were a lot of comments uh, in the last episode about that and many of you uh, reached out to talk about how it um, uh, it resonated with you and a bit of and it was thought provoking you know if it was 41 days spent on the phone on a year in a year yep it's pretty much no uh, 41 yeah something it was over a month spent on the phone if i calculated my weekly use and then you know multiplied up to a year 41 days i have put together a a little graph of a, you know i'm monitoring my daily use and but i have gone down i think well, maybe it's just 20 minutes that, a day, but still that's 20 minutes that you spend on something else. So um, I can highly recommend, and I used um, Courtney Carver's program or challenge called Less Phone, More Life, which was a wake up call and some very simple strategies to use to make friends with the phone and uh, use time intentionally. Here we are in a completely different setup. It is the 19th of March, and I am just inviting you to join me for a bit of an experiment to record a video of a PowerPoint presentation. This is new to me, I've never done it before. I have had a few takes, uh, so hopefully this one will be the best one and uh, the one that you will see. But over the last couple of months, since the 10th of January to the 14th of March, March I have recorded my daily use of time or time spent on the phone. And I have plotted weekly minutes, total minutes per week, which is these, this red line here. So, oh, I will need to put on the, um, the little marker so you can see where I'm pointing. Look at this. Um, so it goes up and down, and I think this week will be a bit of an up. Pleasingly, though, is this 
teal green line has a slight downward uh, angle or slope, which means that uh, minutes spent on the phone is actually going down. You might think, why am I using the 210 as the, um, the lowest point here? and not zero, um, but that was because I thought of 30 minutes per day would be a possible minimum use. Not realistically though, with 30 minutes per day on the phone. And you might also think, you know, all these thousands of minutes, what does that actually equate to in hours per day? So let me give you a bit of a guide on that. So 1,260 minutes is three days on the phone, no, three days, three hours on the phone per day. And I have been below that in average over the last two months, which is pleasing. Uh, I'm a bit surprised because I did have some days that were significantly over. I know this is nerdy, um, but stay with me. Uh, if I then look at what might be the realistic time spent on the phone per day. If we say two hours per day, that equals 840 minutes. I am not there yet, as you can see. I have been pretty close. I know it's not fully um, uh, to scale here, but I have been pretty close, but the running average over time is still lacking behind. So, there's work to be done, intentional use of the phone, being very conscious of what I'm looking at, how I want to spend my time, especially in this area, phone use. What do you think? Did you like this little, uh, this little experiment and uh, did it bring up any thoughts for you? Please let me know in the comments. I will be curious to hear. Well, back to the knitting. That was it for today. Uh, it is a shorter episode this time because my son just knocked on the door and said, Mom, it's time to go. So I will leave you with that. And if you want to find out more about me and the projects, um, head over to my website, which is called mindfulmaking.com.au. Sign up for the newsletter if you so fancy and you will hear more about well the the podcast and also when for instance testing is uh, released this one will come first though it is i think it will be around uh, start of april hopefully with the summer too yeah patience i thank you for all your patience so uh, and if you want if you like being here give it a like thumbs up Subscribe if you fancy, leave a comment. I love hearing from you. It's amazing. So thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time. Bye bye.